Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So before we launch into today's video, I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much to everyone who watched my Beautylish Lucky Bag video. I am a brand new content creator and so prior to that video, I had no videos that even were remotely close to 100 views, let alone 1000 views. So I really appreciate all the support for that video. And if you recently subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I really, really appreciate the support. So today's video is actually going to be quite different from any of my previous videos. So just a heads up first on that. Today, I won't be putting makeup on my face, doing any reviews or anything like that. Instead today, I just wanted to talk to you guys about an issue that's really near and dear to my heart, which is beauty inclusivity, and also talk about the recent controversy around Hourglass's lack of beauty inclusivity. So for those of you who haven't heard about the present controversy, basically, Hourglass for a while has been getting a lot of flack for a lack of inclusivity in its shade range. So its ambient lighting powders are some of its most popular products, but they really aren't very inclusive in their shade range. So for example, this mini edit palette, which came in their most recent holiday edition kind of illustrates this a bit. So let me just swatch these two shades, which we will be talking about a lot in this video. So here they are. And here is the finishing powder and here is the bronzer on my skin. So you can see these are not very pigmented and particularly this guy as a bronzer. Yeah, not, not very pigmented on my skin tone, which is not even that deep. I am medium to tan. You can see it's kind of like a orange cast more so than an actual contour or bronze. So these two powders were actually featured in Hourglass's latest release, which is the Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 2. And the Ambient Lighting Edit palette, the original one, is one of Hourglass's best selling products, but also one of its fairest products in terms of skin tone. I've swatched in the store and kind of came away thinking, so these are all finishing powders, like I'm not really sure how to use this palette. And as you can see here, you know, this is also not great, but it turns out the new release which features a deep skinned model jasmine tooks who is a gorgeous victoria's secret model super super beautiful basically has this as the lightest shade and this as the deepest shade so yeah like i will try to put up a picture here so you guys can see but this is really not a very deep shade and this is an extremely light shade. Like on my skin, this looks like a highlighter. So yeah, you know, people, so people were really frustrated because originally when they saw the initial release of these promo ads, it was like, oh wow, based on the model that you have on this ad, we are assuming that you finally have heard everyone's complaints and you are releasing a palette for deeper skin tones. But no, this, this is the shade range of that palette. Therein is where the controversy lies because people basically felt like Hourglass is trying to trick us. They did not create any new shades. All three of the new shades in the new palette are basically re-releases with these two being two of the three. That really left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, myself included. Jenna, Mel, and Charlotte have all created great videos talking through this, and I really appreciated watching their videos because as I'll go into in this video, I've personally had a lot of complicated feelings about Hourglass over the years, and so seeing them speak out about this was something I really, really appreciated, and that's basically what inspired me to create today's video because I felt like this was a really important issue and even though I am just a new content creator, um, definitely don't have the platform they do, I still thought it was important for me to say something about this just because these two are palettes that I use in a lot of my videos and I do really like the Hourglass formula, but beauty inclusivity is a huge issue area for me. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you all my personal experience with Hourglass ambient lighting powders and also my take on the present controversy. And I'm doing this because I think this is a really important issue and more folks need to talk about it. And also because this is something that has definitely affected me personally. And so I'm just glad that this is finally a topic that we can all discuss openly. Now 
I just wanted to weigh in on this by first sharing with all of you my personal experience with Hourglasses products and in particular with these two little guys here. So the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Series has always been something that I have been really interested in. Year after year, beauty influencers talk about how amazing their products are and especially the holiday collections are always raved about because you get to try out a lot of their different shades in a single palette. And for me personally, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders always just seemed too expensive. So this guy, for example, is 80 some dollars and this is like 50 to 60 dollars. Up until last year, I really did not have a significant luxury beauty collection. So the ambient lighting series was something I just admired from afar, but never really purchased. But then last year, because I had really gotten into the luxury beauty area, I decided, okay, now is the time I am going to finally try out Hourglass's ambient lighting formula. So first off, the day this was released, literally I was there when it first dropped because at the time I didn't realize, okay, it's not that hard to pick these out. They don't actually sell out immediately. Uh, but I was there right on the drop date on Hourglass's website before anyone had swatched it or reviewed it. And so I picked this up on their website and I was super, super excited. And then the reviews started coming in and in particular people started saying that actually this palette, the mini one over here, is better if you have a deeper complexion because these are all solid shades, whereas the six pan is more of these mixed shades over here that don't necessarily have as much pigmentation. So this palette arrives and I am super excited because I'm like, okay, so finally I get to try out Hourglass products. And I put these all on my face and it instantly was quite a disappointment for me. So this bronzer took a ton of building up just for me to see it on my face. And then these blushes too were really tricky to use. This one, Mood Exposure, I love the shade, but it really takes a lot of building up. And then this one, Vibrant Flush, is even less pigmented, plus it's really shimmery. So by the time I've packed on the five layers such that I can see the pigment, it is too shimmery for my everyday look. So at first I was just super, super bummed out about this, but because the other palette, this guy over here, had gotten such great reviews, I was like, okay, why don't I just order this one now from Sephora and then you know, I'll try it out and then hopefully um, I'll like this one and I'll just return the six pan. So then this guy comes in the mail and I try it out. And fortunately this blush is more pigmented because it isn't that swirled formula. But this bronzer, which again is the bronzer in the latest release, is even lighter than the bronzer in the other one, at least on my skin tone. So this one has much more of a gold undertone to it and also has gold reflex. So compared to the one in the six pan, it actually has a much harder time showing up on my skin because my skin does have a strong golden undertone. So it just sort of blurs in more and the reflectivity makes it look less like a shadow. So that was really disappointing to me. And it's funny because last year, before I start uploading videos on YouTube, I actually filmed a really poor quality video where I tried these both on. And it's a pretty sad video to watch because I'm just like building up the product and thinking, oh man, you know, like this just doesn't work on my skin. And so I was thinking, man, do I have to return both of these now? Like I've spent around $150 on Hourglass, which is more than I've ever spent on bronzers, blushes, finishing powder, highlighter, so on and so forth. And up until that point, I had had many previous experiences as well with issues of makeup not being deep enough for my skin tone. So I knew this was a problem, but this particular instance really made me feel sad because I know how popular these products are. I know as someone who for a long time was just watching beauty videos, but not buying any luxury makeup that a lot of folks really look forward to someday having the opportunity to own some of these ambient lighting powders. And I also know that 
I do not have a very deep complexion. I am definitely in the medium to tan range depending on the time of year. So the fact that these were barely passable for me as bronzers really suggested to me that it would be extremely difficult for someone who actually had a deep complexion to make these bronzers work out for them. So now fast forward a bit. So the reason I still have these products here today and I have not returned them is because even though I am right now criticizing Hourglass for their lack of diversity, their products are good, like the quality is good. So even though for me it wasn't working out very well, I still kept both of these palettes. And in fact, if you watch my videos, you know that I actually use these products a lot and I featured them in my best of 2020 video with the caveat that they don't work well for deeper skin tones. So going into this present controversy, I had this love-hate relationship with Hourglass where I love their products, but also kind of hated that because their products have such a unique formula that even though for me like when I look at this palette for example I literally only use these two shades on a regular basis and I very rarely dip into these two and similarly for this palette I usually use this shade this shade and this shade but not these three so even though for both of these palettes I pretty much only use half of the products and these are both very expensive it's still something that I paid full price to Hourglass for despite the fact that they obviously obviously did not try at all to cater to my skin tone or the skin tones of many, many people who have my skin tone or deeper. So that was my feeling going into the present controversy. And I, like many folks, was really excited when I saw the new ad campaign with Jasmine Took. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, Hourglass has been criticized so much, but hey, look at it. They are finally coming out with something for deeper complexions. And so this is awesome. I am super excited about this product. But then when I realized it was literally these two, these two persona non grata shades that made me really, really sad and honestly really pissed off with the brand because it would be one thing if they had Rosie Huntington Whiteley on that ad because they did have her in the ad for this product, for example. So we know these two things work on her skin tone and I love Rosie so like no shade against her but you know if they had a their typical models then that would be one thing it would be like okay so Hourglass still hasn't gotten the message but you know another day goes by but instead to specifically pick a model with a deep complexion and make it out as if they had done their homework and created new shades is just I think a little shady from my perspective, especially because this shade over here is a bronzer. At most, I could believe they use something like this more as a finishing powder on someone with a deep complexion, but finishing powders and bronzers are different formulas. Like this is a finishing powder and this is a bronzer. This literally has golden sheen in it. So it really is gonna take me some convincing to believe that this is gonna work super well along with this for someone with Jasmine's skin tone. So that was really unfortunate in my opinion and really made me feel very frustrated with the brand. So for me personally, part of why I'm speaking out on this right now is I do use these products a lot in my videos and I do have a bunch of pre-recorded videos that I'll be releasing in the coming weeks that do feature these products. And so I both want to say this now because I want to make a statement that I don't want to be encouraging folks to buy these products. So going forward, I'm going to phase out my usage of these products, at least in videos. To be completely honest, I will probably still use these occasionally in private just because I've already paid Hourglass the money and so me not using this in private is only hurting me and isn't affecting the brand at all. And I also know that I am not a big YouTuber by any means. I am a brand new content creator, so this might seem like it's coming from left field, but this is something that is really important to me and has actually been a major motivation for me creating this channel. As I mentioned before, I didn't really start buying luxury beauty in significant quantities until last 
last year. And I've always been balling on a budget as part of this. So I spend a lot of time before I purchase anything, doing a lot of research. And that's honestly how I found the beauty YouTube community. And I really appreciated that folks were uploading videos with swatches, trying out formulas, providing commentary, because that was a way for me to tell whether it would be something worth my money. Throughout this whole process, I often found it really difficult to find people on YouTube who had my same skin tone and that both is in terms of the actual shade. So like I said, I'm medium to tan, but also in terms of the undertones of the skin. So I have pretty golden yellow undertones. And so what that means is oftentimes say like if someone has a really beautiful warm brown lipstick that looks great on them is a perfect nude or something when i try it on it just looks really gray and looks like i'm going for a goth concealer look or something like that so you know it just and that's there's nothing wrong with that but it's just i want to know that before i drop like you know 30 dollars or more on a lipstick so since i personally have found it so helpful to see people of different skin tones on YouTube, talking about products, sharing their opinions. That was for me the motivation of creating this channel. I make no money off of this channel and this is just purely a hobby for me, but that's why I wanted to speak out about this. It didn't make sense for me to make a channel specifically because I was frustrated with the lack of beauty inclusivity in the industry and the lack of data points about how different products perform on different skin tones if I didn't also speak out on issues like this. Those are my two cents. I'm not going to tell you what to do in terms of hourglass products. Like I said, I can't knock their formula, but honestly, personally, that is part of why I am so frustrated with the brand because I think the brand knows that there are people like me out there for whom their products do not work well, who can only use a small fraction of the shades that they include in these palettes, but who will still shell out money just for their formula. And so I do feel like there is a little bit of an element of being taken advantage of there and also an element of them just not even caring about all the folks who do not buy their products because they watch the videos and know that it's not gonna work for them. So that's how I personally feel about this. And for me, I am going to stop buying Hourglass products until they do something about this. And I know that's just a tiny, tiny step of protest. And I mean, as I mentioned, I'm still using the products that I already bought from them but it's just what I personally think is the right thing for me to do. And so I just wanted to share that with all of you, especially in light of my usage of these products on my videos. So I just wanted to provide this context and express that I am really frustrated with Hourglass's policies. And I really hope that the present controversy gets a little bit more traction, more folks talk about it, and Hourglass actually feels forced to act in some way. Year after year, they seem to be doing fine, just chugging along, releasing their new products, which people buy, and then there's criticism, but still no action. So here's to hoping that this time is different and that Hourglass can provide a legitimate explanation for why it has not done things, slash more importantly, change how they release products going forward. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I know today's been a pretty different video than normal, but thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of this video. And if you have thoughts about hourglass and beauty inclusivity, please let me know in the comments below. And in particular, if you do have a deeper complexion and have been working with hourglass products, I would love to hear your experience with them as well. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.